because he downloaded Grinder, chatted with this Frankie fellow, and agreed to have relations in his car in a church parking lot across from the street of our condo. What the f? Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the Hello, friends. Trace amounts of science. Today, we are looking at a character known as Psycho Incel. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was posted in the r slash nuclear revenge subreddit, which we don't normally do. But I figured I'd make an exception, see how it's received. Maybe we work it into the rotation. Maybe the market for these stories is way oversaturated, but I guess we'll see. <laughs> Let's find out together and get into the tale. Make up rumors that I have CP and that I'm a lady of the night because I won't date you. Well, goodbye to your new $150,000 car and hello prison and a ruined life. Well, that sounds pretty juicy. <laughs> Edit, since people keep saying this is not real, because <laughs> uh, I called it a small town with a big school, but when you grow up in the same town with the same kids and same siblings and same families and same houses and jobs and clubs and sports for 18 years straight, it gets small and feels small. Sorry, it's not a population of three and dropping. Further, you could easily find the article about this crime proving it did happen if mods need proof. Well, I have it all. Oh, you're, you're getting a little defensive right off the bat there, ain't you? <laughs> Don't let the comments get to you. Although, maybe the story is completely fake, so thanks for warning me in advance. <laughs> TLDR is at the bottom. If this isn't enough for this sub, let me know and I'll move it, but I've been a long time lurker. Characters, OP, 18 male, unmedicated senior. Like senior in high school or you just have a really old soul? My soul's ready to go on social security. <laughs> uh, uh, there's also Psycho Incel, referred to as P.I., a 16-year-old male. So for the backstory, I was the only gay kid in what felt like my entire small, deep south southern town. And I came out very young, so that identity kind of stuck. My family was mostly very supportive, and I'm grateful for that, because outside of two or three friends, I might as well have had a Scarlet A branded to my forehead. Oh, they started with the A? They're gonna put the G and the Y up there after? <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. It sucks that you had to experience that. People really should be accepted for who they are, as long as they're not a terrible person deep down inside. And so far, I don't get that from ya. Thankfully, you did have, you know, healthy, happy home life, and now that you're 18, you can move the hell away from the town and not worry about it no more. At least that's my advice. <laughs> uh, OP says, eventually, though, a few other people began to come out, one being P.I., a very wealthy, spoiled, all-American entitled kid who drove a very, very expensive new car. Dude, did this, like, another POV from the Elliot Roger Manifesto? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really interesting twist. Like, those are the news articles he's talking about? Okay. <laughs> Ellie didn't go to prison. Theory debunked. <laughs> but yeah, God, do I hate rich kids. All right. <laughs> now, when he first came out, it was to approximately no one's surprise. But regardless, a mutual friend was worried that it would be a hard time and asked if I would befriend him, give him tips on how to get through it, etc. I, of course, said yes, which was a big mistake. Now, by this time, I never cared what anyone thought because the people who mattered had already made it apparent and vice versa. So I was pretty open about the fact that I was actively dating someone much older than me. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't bode well at all. OP says, I don't want to hear it. That's not the point of the story. And it was a wonderful and healthy relationship that my conservative, traditional dad even supported. So shut up. Again, just super defensive and weird. <laughs> you didn't have to throw that part in at all, but you did. The line of logic here truly does elude me. <laughs> uh, how much older was he? Can you tell me that? <laughs> 30 day to get 18 year old and dad doesn't want to call it out even though he knows it's wrong because he doesn't want to be labeled as homophobic okay i guess i will shut up about it now but <laughs> it does paint a picture a little uh now after getting coffee with pi and being friendly he apparently developed feelings for me and after he confessed i gently told him that i was seeing someone and that i was very happy 
This was common knowledge in our gossip-ridden high school anyhow, and that was apparently not acceptable to psycho incel, and he went ballistic. In small towns, there are often what's known as junior-senior prank wars, where the two grades have a war of harmless, albeit annoying pranks. However, our school was not completely uncivilized, so there was a group chat for both grades to discuss the rules and limits, such as no damaging, no hitting houses if someone expressed they weren't participating, renting, etc. What the hell? Renting? <laughs> renting what? I think you may have a word there. <laughs> In that group chat with over a thousand kids, the incel thought it would be a great time to drop bombshell number one. Bro, cotton 4K. <laughs> 4K! I got you in 4K, daddy! I had expressed that I was not participating, to not hit my house because it is rented, and so on and so forth. Oh, renting the house. I guess I'm the dumb one now. So then QPI responding directly and saying, What? You can't afford it with all the money you've been making? Being a toot for your 50-year-old boyfriend? <laughs> uh, I would like to say first off, my boyfriend was nowhere near that age. He was 30, wasn't he? I hate to keep harping on it. <laughs> Because <laughs> it is your experience, so like, you know, choose your own adventure. But for me, nah, couldn't be me, dude. But OP says, I saw red. I love that man to death. And felt a forehead vein practically hemorrhage. Safe to say, the rumor passed throughout the high school and the community. My coaches took me aside. Our extra religious teachers tormented me more, and yeah, now I was a complete pariah. Oh well. At least I had acceptance to a top university, my friends, boyfriend, and family. I was almost done. And then this next rumor drop, and this is when it went nuclear. Hey, for real, proud of you for getting up and out, though, OP. Maybe next time, someone around your own age, but... <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's not even that bad. The age was never stated. We only know that it's not above 50. <laughs> uh, so one day... I got a call from a friend, and I immediately knew something was wrong. Apparently, little P.I. had decided it was a good idea to lie and tell people that I had one, cheated on my boyfriend, two, made a video with him, and three, it was with a junior, someone under 18, none of which was remotely true. I mean, people are known to spread lies every now and again. I think maybe it's the reaction that you have to said lies, that is really cementing these things into people's psyche. You know what I mean? If you just never addressed it or brushed it off with like simple, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> I don't think people would believe it. But you feel the need to defend yourself against what is clearly a lie. I don't know, man. 18's a rough age. <laughs> High school is such a serious thing. These problems matter. <laughs> I'm not going to try and follow the lines of logic anymore. Thankfully, he was very popular and very straight, and also was an obsession of P.I.'s and knew where it came from, and he agreed to, in writing, express that none of this was true. Oh, I guess him being the guy that you supposedly made the fake video with? God, this is about the dumbest fucking thing ever, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and they gave me copious amounts of evidence, screenshots of texts, Instagram DMs, etc. of P.I.'s online harassment. I kept all of this in a file, just in case this ever got out, and I needed to defend myself. And thankfully, it never became more than a funny, impossible, salacious story made up about me. Could we see some of the receipts? That might make this story more plausible. <laughs> However... It was too late for him, as I was already very mentally unstable, and this would have ruined everything I was riding on. Now, on to the revenge. Finally. I'm having fun trying to deconstruct this, uh, what is clearly a fake story. Don't ask me how I know, I just know. I guess it's the fake cheating story that you clearly have a, a contract refuting. And you're more upset about that than about him calling you a toot in a, in a group chat which actually did seem to have some legs for people. Maybe it's a combination of the two things. I don't really know. What I do know is that this story just seems a little sus, that's all. <laughs> so what was the revenge? 
OP says, so not only was Psycho Incel's car brand new, but it was a new car because he had destroyed his old one and was not getting another. Love small town gossip, but also driving through someone's house is uh, pretty conspicuous. Lol. Was he drunk or just like crashing into the living room trying to end somebody? <laughs> no answers. Of course not. OP says, now I'll admit that I did not come up with this. I read it in a fan fiction, but it actually worked out very well. UOP? Into fan fiction? Nah. <laughs> Couldn't be you. <laughs> the first thing I did was go to the furthest bait and tackle shop I could find and bought catfish bait. Now, if you don't fish, then you might not know, but catfish love the stinkiest, smelliest bait you can find and I bought a whole jar of that slop. I knew the parking lot of my school had no security or cameras because my car had already been vandalized. I did embrace the F word carved into my door with pride, eventually. Damn, high school does suck though. The only counterplay I can think of there is writing killer underneath the F word. And then you go up and you're like, oh, I'm one of you guys. And they're like, cool, welcome to the group. And then you kill them all. And it's the last ones laying there. He's like, oh no, I thought you were the F slur killer. And you say, I am, but I meant it as a title instead of a verb. <laughs> and then you get him. Nah, that idea's stupid. The thing you did is better. Just lean in when people are making fun of you most of the time. Anyway, on with the revenge. OP says, and then I got to work in the cold February morning. First thing I did was hammer nails into three of his tires. Now this wouldn't pop them immediately, but they would eventually each deflate at much more inconvenient places, and nails would look more accidental than if they were slashed. Yes indeed, I too carry around a hammer and nails just for this purpose. <laughs> They're all gonna pay the ultimate price! I have to have my tools! <sighs> then I took poison ivy and rubbed it all over the door handles of his car. Afterwards, I took a mix of gravel and Vaseline and spread it all over the windshield wipers, which would just scratch the hell out of it once he used them. Everything else seemed, you know, kind of okay. Poison ivy on the door handle's a little outlandish, but I mean, it is an oil. It could stick around, but gravel and Vaseline, <laughs> I, I never heard that one. We're really pushing the whole boat out, aren't we? <laughs> Uh, my favorite, however, was using the catfish bait. Knowing enough about cars, i.e. copious googling, I figured out how to get to the AC portion and poured in the catfish bait. I don't know, man, you probably should have googled it before writing the story, because I'm pretty sure you gotta pop the hood, and you can't pop the hood without the keys, so there would have to be like a heist in order to get the keys. My suspension of disbelief was quite bent after gravel Vaseline. But yeah, I don't think this author knows how an AC works or where it's located. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I know about cars. I'm a car guy. Okay, well, do you know gr about gravity? <laughs> you would have to go through the hood. The only other way would be to like reach up under the car. In which case, how are you going to pour something in? Poor OP. Clearly didn't get enough attention. Got a lie on Reddit for internet points. <laughs> uh. I like to think that even without the overly defensive edit stuck in the front part of the post that I that I would have caught this. But again, I'm not a car guy. I just did copious amounts of googling. Whatever. Anyway, the lie continues as OP says, <laughs> sadly, I wouldn't be able to witness this, but he wouldn't be using his AC for another month or so since it's still cold. All that time for it to rot and fester and congeal. And the first day it's warm and he decides to blast the AC, his car will be filled with the fumes of a thousand rotten piles of roadkill and low tide without any idea of where it's coming from or how to get rid of it. You understand that the air conditioning system's not like hermetically sealed or anything, right? <laughs> uh, this is so dumb. I hate this post. <laughs> <laughs> this poster should feel really bad about writing this tripe. Not even making it halfway believable. Just say whatever the fuck you want and hope people will believe it. Somebody in your life really gassed you up to the point that you think you're smarter than everybody else, didn't they? I I'm gonna blame your parents. 
Specifically, I'll blame Dad, since he didn't nut up enough to get you out of what is possibly a grooming situation. OP said, yeah, it's all wonderful and stuff like that, but yeah, that is something the grooming victims often say. I have to process this through my own frame of reference. You want to make up some silly stories? Guess what? I can make up some silly stories, too. <laughs> uh, that story's probably not actually that silly, come to think of it. <laughs> uh, the next part of this story is honestly out of pure dumb luck, and I can't claim complete responsibility for the universe's work. However, I, being the obsessive paranoid type, would check his socials from a burner account now and again, perhaps hoping to hear about his fishy car or see if he aired out more rumors about me. One day I found something odd. Nothing. Every single social media he had was gone. You're really doing the stalking thing, OP. You're just as fucking weird as that guy, you know? <laughs> and out of pure curiosity, I googled his name and found something very juicy and very crazy. He was arrested in an entirely different state for attempting to impersonate a government official and bring a gun into a theme park. Safe to say, that didn't fly, but it also did not get enough traction as I would like, and thus, I sent it to everyone I knew in our small town. His summer job, future college, our high school, that giant group chat of over a thousand people, yep, got sent there as well. At the end of the day, he was a pariah, jobless, and collegeless. I left my town and honestly haven't heard anything about him since, but I can't imagine he amounted to much, being that insane and with that type of crime as well. TLDR, guy is mad I won't date him, so tells town that I'm a toot because of the age difference with my boyfriend, then further tries to tell people that I'm a PDF file, so I destroy his car and ruin his reputation. PDF? I guess because the kid was 16. I don't know, I think 16 and 18 Romeo and Juliet laws apply. Still pretty gross if you ask me. So yeah, I could see OP being mad enough to do all this. The fact that he tried to bring a weapon to a theme park, well, yeah, that's completely his own doing, isn't it? <laughs> this problem truly took care of itself. Now that catfish bait is gonna rot inside of his air conditioning tank for for a decade instead oh that revenge sure was nuclear there's no such thing as an air conditioning tank i don't believe any of this happened you found an article op and you tried to tie it back into your own reality to make yourself seem like a more interesting person isn't that right well i'm gonna tell you right now op that you don't have to lie to kick it you know a lot more people are gonna want to kick it with you if you are authentic with yourself and with others which I don't think you are being here. You clearly seek attention, and hey, that's that's okay. That's fine. Me too. But you need to do it through the proper channels, man. Like, <laughs> sit out here making, making made-up posts on Reddit. So good, yeah. He went to jail and everybody clapped. <laughs> wow! Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> there. There it is. Enjoy it. I hated that fucking post, man. We're gonna move into the next one. Fingers crossed that it is more plausible. <laughs> Better written. Wasn't even really a nuclear revenge, was it? It was just like a, a, an insane incel who was given a gun by a federal agent, allegedly, and then tried to take it into a theme park. <laughs> uh, whatever. Okay, I'm done. Okay, not quite done yet. For real, tell me how old the boyfriend was. <laughs> okay, now I'm done. <laughs> uh, we'll get to the next one. My fiancé cheated with several men, including somebody who was on the offender registry, so I took my revenge. I hope she's included in the revenge. If it's just all the dudes, then yeah, you're suffering some deep denial, but I guess we'll see. After being asked by many people why that wasn't posted to nuclear or pro-revenge, I have decided to try again. Moderators at Pro explained why I didn't qualify and suggested nuclear, but it never posted after my submission. I think maybe it was because my account was only days old, so fingers crossed that it works this time. Why it didn't qualify? <laughs> I think that's like the dumbest rule to have on a revenge subreddit. Do you think it qualifies? Probably it does. Who gives a shit about semantics? We don't need to get down into the, the nitty gritty of what this qualifies as. Just tell us a good story, for God's sake. It's probably what the viewers are screaming too after that last story. <laughs> give it to me, just give it! 
<laughs> Again, fingers crossed that it works this time. <laughs> and, uh, so OP says, I met my ex in 2012, right after I had just turned 30. I'd only dated and been with women exclusively until I came out as bi at 28. We're discovering new things about ourselves every day, ain't we? Let's just say the year I was 29 was a busy year, making up for what I missed out on. Huh. Gross. It was mostly casual hookups. Yes, safe. Okay, not as gross, I guess. <laughs> All right. And I did try dating two different guys for a few weeks, but it just never worked out or got serious. So I kind of figured that I'd probably end up marrying a woman or not getting married at all because I just didn't see myself catching romantic and intimate feelings for a guy. But then I met Ryan. From the first date, it was just like the only other time in my life I had fallen in love. Butterflies. Thinking about him constantly, wanting to spend every moment with him. He fell for me hard too, and we became an item, though he did say that he considered my bisexuality a turn-on because he had a thing for straight guys. Oh yeah, solid foundation for a relationship right there. <laughs> I guess it is just a thing that he likes. But yeah, these are the early days. This is the best the relationship is ever going to be. OP says, uh, this also gave Ryan pause because of my desires for the opposite gender and his concern that it might lead me astray. I thought about it and understood that it was a legitimate worry, but I assured him that I couldn't even think of anyone else because I was really into him. Note, I knew he was the one by the end of the first month and I was in love, but I wasn't going to say these things too soon and risk scaring him off. It's just brain chemicals. See how you feel after 10 years. <laughs> On our first date, he admitted to me that he was legally blind due to a genetic disorder and that it was progressive and eventually he would only have a sliver of his peripheral vision. He immediately said he understood if I didn't want to see him again because no other guy had wanted to date him and be his driver all of the time. Oh my God, bro. I drive wifey everywhere and I love it. It is an act of service that allows us to spend some time together. And drive it ain't too bad for the most part. Except in Manila. Holy shit. <laughs> this is Manila. Here, the streets are like parking lots. <laughs> anyway, uh, OP says, I grew up with a brother in a wheelchair who never learned how to walk or talk due to misdiagnosed meningitis at six months old back in the 70s. I told him that and said that my brother had what was a severe disability, so in my perspective, his blindness had no effect on my feelings and that always being the driver was a small sacrifice just to be with him. I mean, if you say it, OP, then it must be so. I'm proud of you for taking that upon yourself. OP's definitely a fighter, you know, bit of a go-getter. You gotta admire that. Well, the following years were indeed bliss. We brought out the best in each other. My family, who was surprised but very supportive when I came out, adored Ryan and treated him like family and said that I acted happier since we had been together. When I met him, he was working part-time in retail and had done very poorly in high school because he lost a lot of his confidence as his vision deteriorated. I told him that the one thing I did insist on was that he do something with his life because he had too much to offer, and I told him that I would help. He said he'd wanted to be a teacher, but didn't think someone with limited vision could teach. Nonsense. So I put him through community college for two years, and then two and a half years of a local university, and finally the one-year teacher certification program as required by California. I drove countless miles and paid hundreds in public transportation costs for him, never blinking an eye or complaining. Yeah, I mean, that's just the type of stuff that you do for the people that you love, isn't it? However, the ugly truth is sometimes we learn that the people we love don't love us quite as much back. And it is a harsh lesson to learn. I mean, maybe you could have seen it up front. Maybe you were sort of blinded by his disability. Forgive the pun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you, you missed the red flag or ten. Or maybe Ryan's a complete sociopath. I'm not really sure. <laughs> OP continues, we had been together for seven and a half years. Damn, dude. I said, tell me how you feel after a decade. And yeah, basically he's going to do exactly that. 
We were engaged to be married in October, by the time he was in his last semester of his teaching certification, which involved him student teaching at his former high school with his favorite teacher from his days in school. Then the pandemic hit, and the schools closed down. Fortunately, he'd had enough hours in the classroom that he would still qualify to be certified after the governor issued a waiver via executive order. Wow, how generous of California's governor to allow underqualified teachers into the classroom <laughs> via executive order. <laughs> uh, continuing, uh, OP says, On the third day of the stay-at-home order in March, my life crumbled. When I innocently found out he had cheated on me with an ex, all because he handed his phone to me to show me something on Instagram. I accidentally fat-thumbed the back arrow when he gave it to me, taking me back to the list of all his messages. I looked and recognized the name of his ex as the second message, dated a week ago. I clicked on it and my heart sank. Directions to my house, pictures, dirty talk, and reassuring him not to worry about me because he had my location on my Find My Friends just in case I came home from work. Damn, dude. Scandalous. Dirty. Seven and a half years! <laughs> uh, holy shit, man. That moment has to be soul-crushing. This thing that you've been working on for a, a large portion of your adult life just, just crumbles to dust before your eyes because of a bunch of text messages. Oh, I can't even imagine the pain. It cuts me so deep. I immediately started screaming, demanding to know everything, and he admitted to having his ex over twice for some boom boom, and that they didn't even use rubbers. His ex was engaged to his girlfriend during this, adding yet another victim. Yeah, we certainly do live in a society, don't we? <laughs> then he admitted to sleeping with his straight but curious recently single cousin by marriage twice, again with no rubber. Uh, finally, he admitted to sleeping with a supposedly straight guy that he and many of my cousins went to school with, who I told Ryan that I didn't really like him or want them talking because I didn't trust him after what I'd read about him. Since they were never close friends, I didn't feel like this was a big sacrifice or that I was being too controlling, and I assumed that he knew why I and all of my cousins felt that way, but I didn't bother repeating it. The reason was, after high school, at age 20, this guy was convicted of S.A. and uh, entry of a foreign object against a 16-year-old girl, and he had gone to jail and was required to register as an offender for life. Oh my god, dude, this is disgusting. <laughs> we really are sinking down to the darkest depths, aren't we? This is more well-written than the first story, but yeah, it's... It's a hell of a lot sadder. I hate this one for completely different reasons. <laughs> uh, OP says, apparently my ex was the only person in his graduating class that hadn't heard the news about him going to jail. All of this happened in my home while I was working. We spent the whole weekend crying, with me asking over and over, why? And him repeatedly crying and saying that he just didn't know and that he felt terrible. Yeah, not terrible enough to not do it at least six fucking times. Get out of my house! Are we really gonna sit here and try and work through this? It's over now. Y you've sown, <laughs> and now is the time for reaping. Monday comes around, and anger started being as common as sadness, and I made a comment that said I was going to pull all the phone records going back the three years that AT&T kept them up, even if I had to do it for a fee. Only when he heard that did he admit to one more guy. <laughs> Some rando named Frankie off the gay hookup app Grinder, who was the first guy he cheated with and continued to casually hook up with for nearly two years, with the last time being in February, which was the month before this. Bro, <laughs> that is so fucked up. Uh, I, I can't believe it. Was that unprotected too? Does he care about the bugs that Frankie could be dragging into this house? Surely there are gay people out there who are not hypergamous, but, um... <laughs> this is a really bad example of that. <laughs> uh, so, then he told me how all this started. And get this! 
It was the day after his graduation with his B.A. in May 2018, and he was drunk from celebrating and wanted to do it. I, too, had been celebrating with him and said I was too drunk to perform and said I'd make it up the next day, and then I passed out asleep on the couch. Apparently, he was, quote-unquote, angry horny <laughs> because he downloaded Grinder, chatted with this Frankie fellow and agreed to have relations in his car in a church parking lot across from the street of our condo. What the f Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. Uh, just when you think surely it can't get any more debaucherous. In the moment, he probably thought it was exciting and fun, but yeah, is it exciting enough to blow up the decade-long relationship that you've been building with another human being? Also, to, to crush their hopes and dreams, to change them irreparably because of a choice that you made. OP's not going to be able to love or, or trust anybody in the way that he once was able to. Ryan ruined that for him. That makes me sad. That makes me angry. But at least I know that nuclear revenge is on its way. <laughs> So yeah, the church parking lot where they did it also happened to be across the street from a school. <laughs> and this fact will be important later on. Oh, I'm connecting dots already. This all happened while I slept on the couch. All the times they hooked up after that was in my condo again and again while I was working or visiting a friend for the night up the coast. He used to love going, but started saying that he couldn't occasionally because of homework or, or studying. Uh-huh. Red flag number one. But I guess OP didn't see it as a red flag. He's like, we're in too deep. Surely you wouldn't blow it up after we've come this far. <laughs> Surely. It really does depress me. He trusts his partner so much. <sighs> OP says, well, I absolutely lost it. I told him to get in the car, and I drove him to his family's house, where he could tell them what he did. So they understood why he was now moving back into their house. Oh, there you go. You love to see this. Some righteous indignation. <laughs> While he was in the house, I was in the driveway on the phone with AT&T, ordering those three years worth of detailed call and text logs. And then I made an appointment to be screened for STIs. Hell yeah, dude. OP is a man with a plan now. <laughs> Look at him go. I suspended his phone service until he could figure out how to pay for his own goddamn phone. And then I temporarily changed all his passwords on the social media accounts that he cheated with. And to make sure he couldn't hide more evidence so only I would have access to his cloud. Jesus, dude, OP's gonna take this one to the mat, and I love to see it. <laughs> Maybe we should do nuclear revenge more. I don't know how poop like that first post slipped through when it's so heavily moderated, but okay. This one does make up for it. I love the intrigue. OP says that Ryan and I had shared each other's passwords on his suggestion years before. I also called the bank and issued a stop payment on his final tuition check, that I had sent to the certification program the week before, and it hadn't hit the bank yet. Good, big brain! <laughs> before deleting his social media, except Facebook, I took screenshots of the entire Instagram conversation with his ex and mailed the conversation to the ex's fiance, who deserved to know, so she could see a doctor and get tested as well. His family was very religious and had kicked him out in high school for three days when he tried to admit that he was bi and only took him back in when he took it back. Needless to say, she ended it. He got kicked out. That's one down. Oh, it's like Scott Pilgrim, but slightly gayer. <laughs> Only slightly. Ryan came back out to the car and we went home. I took his house key and told him to say goodbye to our three pets and get packing. The entire time he packed, I studied those phone records to find out dates, times, and if there was anyone else that he might be leaving out. He answered every question I asked, and it was then that I discovered that the offender and he had only done mouth stuff in my home, and that the actual action was in the same parking lot that he screwed that Frankie guy in. You mean the parking lot across from the school? Yeah, those, those dots, they are connected now. But I did see it coming. 
Uh, the wheels started turning, and the next day I walked over to the church and, sure enough, spotted a camera. I spoke to a secretary, sweet old lady at the church, and informed them about a registered offender doing it in their parking lot, and that not only was it a violation of his parole for indecent exposure, but that he was not allowed to be that close to a school, and I provided the date. I was in luck. They had a digital two-year loop system that started deleting day by day after it had been retained for two years. It was April 2020, and he first cheated with Frankie in May 2018, and the offender was in April of 2019. Well, you could catch them all in the act if you wanted to. Probably don't do that, though, OP, for your own mental health, okay? <laughs> just, just sever these ties and move on after you burn your ex to the ground. I told the secretary that I would be filing a police report and that probation would require a copy of that tape eventually. They said that they'd save the file and allow me a thumb drive of both days to submit with my police report. Within a month, the offender was locked up again. Two down. <laughs> I really like how this is structured. It's like Kill Bill with less fluids. <laughs> <laughs> I also filed a police report against the Frankie guy. The police said it was a relatively minor infraction, but since it was across from a school playground and a skate park, they would follow up, but there would be no jail time. I researched the hell out of Frankie and called him to confront him. He was smug and admitted to knowing about me the whole time. What he didn't know is that I had found out that he had a job that required a security clearance, and he had several judgments against him, and collection agencies had been looking for him. Best money I ever spent on that data collection site. <laughs> I don't know why they couldn't find him and just garnish his wages, but it ends up he was Hispanic and had two last names and was a junior, plus he frequently went by his middle name, Francisco, Frankie for short, so yeah, he got lost in the paperwork confusion. I sent a letter to the collection agencies, providing his employer and current location and contact info, and then I sent a copy of the police report about misdemeanor indecent exposure, for which he pled guilty, and it was a fine with community service. Not considered a crime that would go on the registry. His wages did get garnished, but only for two paychecks, because the misdemeanor was enough for him to lose his security clearance and get fired. Three down. <laughs> I love this, dude. I hope you burn the fiancé to the ground like last of all. What a cathartic moment. Oh! <laughs> then I contacted Ryan's family on his mother's side, pretending to be him from his Facebook account, making sure they knew that he had boned his cousin. <laughs> it spread through the family like wildfire, and soon his cousin was contacting me because he couldn't get a hold of Ryan to ask why he would expose what they did. I just laughed and said, yeah, you shouldn't screw your cousin. <laughs> good advice for life, yeah. Especially when they're engaged, and that he'd messed around in my house, so now it was my turn for payback. Four down. And then you gotta get the cheater himself, the source of all this heartache. Might not make you feel completely better in the moment, but I, trust me, this is going to help. I love vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, I had already stopped payment, but since he was so close to finishing, I was sure his family would bail him out and pay for university. Like I said, indecent exposure is usually just a slap on the wrist type misdemeanor. However, I remembered from some of the paperwork that he had signed in order to become a mandated reporter that you could lose your teaching certification for quote unquote documented acts of moral turpitude. <laughs> well, that seems pretty cut and dry, doesn't it? I've seen nothing but moral turpitude in this story. He boned his cousin, for God's sake! How much more turpitudinous could it possibly be? <laughs> I sent a copy of both police reports from the parking lot with still shots from the security footage, clearly showing Ryan's face to the school district he'd been student teaching in, and a copy to the Commission on Teacher Credentials. Fifth and final down. 
damn, dude, a lot of money down the drain for all that schooling. But yeah, you built it. You, you had the capability to, de to destroy it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> uh, you get what you fucking deserve. <laughs> I hate cheaters, bro. That's not to say I haven't ever cheated, but once you start talking marriage, fiance, wife, husband, whatever, it's time to cut that shit out, man. Have some open, honest conversations about what it is you actually want. That's what adults do. These people still in their 30s fucking haven't got it figured out at all. With the exception of OP, of course. He, he seems like a good dude, and yeah, I truly do hope the best. Anyway, OP continues, Admittedly, I did all this out of anger, but he shattered my sense of self-worth and made me incredibly bitter and untrusting after years of being generous and supporting him. Now, dude, you, you are completely justified in all of this. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, like I said earlier, he, he changed you as a human being. He'll probably do it again, but there is a slim chance he'll think back on this situation and, and consider a better path, at least. Anyway, everywhere I looked in the town, I thought of Ryan and the cheating. I felt a terrible energy in my condo, knowing that all of that happened there. I stayed nine months and watched all five of their lives self-destruct. <laughs> then I sold my condo, making a nice profit, and relocated to the Pacific Northwest to start over. I think it's hilarious that you stuck around to watch the fallout. You're just like, <laughs> this is what you get. <laughs> One thing that is sad is I found out just recently that his ex, whose fiance broke up with him, ending himself uh, several months later after I moved. Yeah, that ain't really your fault, OP. That guy had other demons. It is too bad that his family was so closed-minded as to turn on their own son, but in the end, it's really not my fault. Yeah, good you know that. <laughs> it's not my fault that he cheated on his fiance by coming into my home at my fiance's invitation to cheat. That type of action is never the answer to one's problems, and I hope the fiancé he cheated on doesn't blame herself, and that only his family does, as they should. That's true, kid. It's like you're flesh and blood, bro. How can you just throw him out in the streets like that? I don't know. Then again, maybe that wasn't the only reason. Maybe he was displaying some other types of moral turpitude. Still pretty sad, though. You hate to see somebody go like that. Uh, TLDR, I emotionally and financially supported my ex through college and his teacher credential program for over seven years, only to discover that he had cheated on me with four different guys, one of them the day after he graduated, and then occasionally for nearly two years in my home while I was at work. I took my revenge. My ex lost his career before it even started, and our relationship. One affair partner lost his job and had bill collectors after him. Another lost his fiance and was kicked out. A third humiliated when his entire family found out that he banged his cousin. And the fourth was put in jail for violating probation. Lesson, do not cheat and deceive or fuck around and find out. <laughs> Uh, damn, OP's kind of a badass, though. I love all of this. Like, I I'm such a passive person that I probably would have just been the one to leave and be like, okay, you will suffer for this years down the road. I could be the one that got away because you ruined it. But to take everybody involved to task and tear their lives down as much as humanly possible, that's just... Oh, that's ambrosia. That's something to be applauded, OP. <laughs> Uh, amazing post. I, I love this post so much more. So thank you very much for sharing. If you guys enjoyed, I hope you like, comment, subscribe on the video. Uh, check out my Patreon. Maybe uh, hit me up on them YouTube memberships, huh? Patreon is slightly preferred, but both of them do give me money every month that I can count on, and it, it means the world, honestly. Finally, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, supporting, loving me as I love you. Always remember that you are loved. We are loved. We are all worthy. We definitely, definitely deserve it. And I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye-bye. Go ahead, cut him open. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Promise, where is he?